let's review Bell's palsy, a key medical surgical topic from the nervous system section that you'll need to know. We will go over what to look for, testing for it, treatment, and how to provide nursing management for Bell's palsy. Then we will tackle some practice question. Let's get NCLEX ready. Bell's palsy occurs when the facial nerve 7 is inflamed, which usually occurs as a result of a viral infection. Other causes can be due to a tumor, injury, or meningitis. However, an exact cause may not always be noted due to the inflammation of facial nerve 7, sudden unilateral facial weakness, or facial paralysis occurs. Bell's palsy can affect any age group. Signs and symptoms of Bell's palsy are sudden unilateral facial weakness or facial paralysis, jaw pain, drooping mouth, drooling on the affected side, difficulty keeping the eyelid closed on the affected side, difficulty raising the eyebrow or making facial expression. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is based on clinical findings and symptoms. MRI and CT scans may be done to rule out strokes or tumors that can cause facial paralysis to occur. Potential complication. Teach the patient to report for any abnormal finding, such as vision changes or severe changes. The healthcare provider must be notified as soon as possible. Treatment. Prednisone is an oral corticosteroid that is prescribed to reduce the swelling of the facial nerve. Eye drops are prescribed to keep the eye moist since the eyelid cannot completely shut or stay shut. Pain medications such as ibuprofen can be administered for pain relief. Physical therapy is recommended for facial exercises. Recovery can occur spontaneously without treatment because the symptoms of Bell's palsy mimic serious conditions such as a stroke, a healthcare provider should still be notified immediately. Nursing Management Educate the patient and caregivers on the condition, treatment, and management. Provide emotional support. Keep in mind that physical looks are affected, so self-esteem and mental health may be affected as well, even if it is a temporary situation. Encourage facial exercises as directed, which may include grimacing in the mirror. Keep the affected eye protected with an eye patch, especially when outdoors. Tape the eyelid at nighttime to keep it shut since it cannot stay shut on its own. Educate to avoid wind and dust exposure. Moist heat should be applied to reduce pain on the affected side of the face. Massage the face as directed. To prevent a nutrition deficit, encourage eating and drinking on the unaffected side. Okay, that was a breakdown of what you should know about the nervous system disorder, Bell's palsy. Before we test what we've learned so far, a quick reminder to grab your 160 free digital flash cards at cutienurses.com slash start. Please don't forget to subscribe and support our channel. Now, let's apply what you just learned to 10 Bell's palsy questions. Question one, the nurse is providing care for a patient diagnosed with Bell's palsy which of the following intervention is appropriate? A, wear an eye patch on the affected side. B, place eye drops as directed. C, wear an eye patch on the unaffected side. Or D, both A and B. And the correct answer is D, both A and B. Rationale, the affected eye should be protected since the eyelid cannot fully close. Eye drops are prescribed and should be administered to keep the affected eye moist. Question two. The nursing student is studying Bell's palsy, which is one of the nervous system disorders. Which of the following is a potential cause of Bell's palsy? So like all that applies. A, injury. B, meningitis. C, tumor. Or D, viral infection. And the correct answer is a, B, C, and D. Rationale, all of the above. Injury, meningitis, tumor, and viral infection are potential causes of Bell's palsy. Question three. The nurse is providing care for a patient diagnosed with Bell's palsy. 
Which of the following statements requires further evaluation? A. I should avoid wind exposure. B. I should keep the affected eye covered. C. Bell's palsy can go away on its own. Or D. I understand that Bell's palsy is a permanent condition and will not go away. And the correct answer is D. I understand Bell's palsy is a permanent condition and will not go away. Rationale. When exposure should be avoided, the affected eye should be covered since the eyelid cannot close all the way on its own. Bell's palsy can subside on its own over time. Question 4. The nurse is about to administer medication for a patient diagnosed with Bell's palsy. Which of the following medication is given to reduce facial nerve edema? A. Tylenol, B. Mentoprolol, C. Pregnisone, or D. Ibuprofen. And the correct answer is C. Pregnisone. Rationale. Prednisone is given to reduce the facial nerve swelling, which is an oral corticosteroid. Metoprolol is given to alleviate hypertension, which is not necessary for Bell's palsy. Ibuprofen and Tylenol are not given to reduce facial nerve edema, but to provide pain relief. All right, question five. Nursing student Anna is providing care for a patient with Bell's palsy and is learning more about the nervous system disorder. Which of the following cranial nerves are affected by Bell's palsy? A. Cranial nerve 5 B. Cranial nerve 6 C. Cranial nerve 7 Or D. Cranial nerve 10 And the correct answer is C. Cranial nerve 7 Rationale Bell's palsy is a result of an inflammation affecting the cranial nerve 7, which is the facial nerve. The brain is connected to the muscles that control facial expressions and movement. Cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve, is responsible for sensory information from the face to the brain. Cranial nerve 6, abducens nerve, is responsible for the extraocular motor functions of the eye. Cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, that is responsible for the involuntary body functions such as digestion and heart rate. On to true or false statement. Statement 6. To prevent a nutrition deficit, encourage eating and drinking on the unaffected side. This statement is true. Statement 7. Bell's palsy is a permanent condition with no known cure. This statement is false. Those with Bell's palsy can recover. However, there is no known cure. Statement 8. Unilateral facial weakness is one of the symptoms of Bell's palsy. This statement is true. Statement 9. Facial muscle exercise should be encouraged, such as grimacing. This statement is true. And statement 10. The patient with Bell's palsy should be advised to protect the eye on the unaffected side. This statement is false. The patient with Bell's palsy should be advised to protect the eye on the affected side. Awesome job on completing the questions for Bell's palsy. Make sure you check out my next video where we dive into more essential nursing school hacks that you need to become an awesome nurse. Remember to hit that red subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by and supporting us. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.